When you're working double layer knitting, double knitting, with stocking stitch on both public sides, we have to keep the front yarn for the front layer always in front of the back layer stitches, so I must keep that white yarn out of the way whilst I work the blue back purl. So it's a series of knits, the front, keep the front yarn forward, purl the back stitch, take the back yarn out of the way whilst I knit the front one, and so on, alternating across the row. When I perform a colour change, this instead of being a white knit is now going to be a blue knit. Bring the blue yarn out of the way whilst I do a white purl. So blue knit, yarn forward, white purl, yarn back, blue knit, yarn forward, white purl, and the yarn sort of naturally drops to the back because of the way I'm holding it. But as long as you just think about where the yarns are going to be and to keep them out of the way of the opposing stitches, you should be fine. And I'm going to go back to the original pattern, so I'm going to go to knit white, pearl blue, and I'm always dealing in pairs of stitches. So if I have a good look at this row now, you'll be able to see where I've made the colour changes. You have to read it quite hard, so or quite carefully. There's white, per white knit blue pearl, one, two, three, four, five of them. Then there's a double blue stitch. That's a good indicator that that's where the colour change took place. Then it's blue knit white pearl, one, two, three, four, five. There's the double stitch. That's where the colour change took place. And then there are two more pairs with white knits and blue pearls. So we've changed colour over that section of the row. Now in the paint box scarf, we actually add an extra degree of interest by putting some reverse stocking stitches into the squares of colour. So let's just set the hands up again. And we're going to match the colours but not necessarily match the stitches. So I'm going to knit that one and purl that one knit this, purl that one, and now I'm at the colour change. But this time, instead of working these white stitches as knits, I'm going to work them as purls. So in actual fact, my yarn is in the right position already, and I don't have to move it in order to knit the blue one. So when I'm actually working reverse stocking stitch on both layers, I don't need to move the yarns nearly as much. It just feels odd after all the moving of the yarns when you're working stocking stitch. So I'm matching the stitch colours, but I'm creating reverse stocking stitch on the front fabric and reverse stocking stitch on the back fabric. Now I'm going to go back to stocking stitch again, so I'm going to knit my front stitch, pull my back stitch, knit my front, pull my back and keep the yarns out of the way of one another. If I fail to move that pearl or that white yarn whilst I did that blue knit, when I go to take it to work the next one, I'm going to get a piece of yarn in front of it. So that's the reason we have to move the yarns out of the way of one another when working stocking stitch. And there's the start of our reverse stocking stitch square. This is the paint box scarf. It's worked in a solid colour and a variegated yarn with a very gentle colour gradation. One side the major grid is in the solid, on the other side it's in the variegated. And this, the paint box blocks are worked in reverse stocking stitch. So there are four rows where you do stocking stitch just all on its own. And then you reverse the colours for seven stitches to start the paint box off. You don't immediately start with reverse stocking stitch because you'd get contrasting coloured pearl blips at the bottom. So the first row is in stocking stitch of the colour change. And after that you, you actually work in reverse stocking stitch on both sides of the fabric to give you this nice textured look.
double knitting is much harder to think about than it is to actually do. Get some needles, give it a try, it really is lots of fun.